According to a report from ESPN's Dan Graziano, it is a near certainty that the Carolina Panthers will be placing a franchise tag on Brian Burns. So what does this mean for both parties moving forward? I'll tell you right here on Locked On Panthers. You are Locked On Panthers, your daily Carolina Panthers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, the part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, as always, Julian Council, talking Carolina Panthers with you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, your team every day. That's our motto here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Subscribe or follow the show for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter at Julian Council, where on Fridays throughout the offseason. I'm right here on the show answering your weekly Friday mailbag questions. The best way to get those questions into me is by either adding me or DMing me. But of course, follow me first on Twitter at Julian Council to get the questions in for the weekly Friday mailbag right here on Locked on Panthers. Today's episode of Locked on Panthers is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on to get started today. And by the way, North Carolina one week away. March 11th, FanDuel legal sports betting is coming to North Carolina. I cannot wait. So please go to FanDuel.com slash Locked on to get ready for that to begin as we sit here right now we are also waiting for the conclusion of the brian burns contract negotiations will he get an extension prior to the franchise tag deadline on march 5th that's tuesday at 4 p.m eastern time or will he be franchise tagged and we'll continue to figure out what will the future be for brian burns and the Carolina Panthers. According to Dan Graziano of ESPN.com, he reported this on Sunday morning from the Combine. It's a near certainty the Panthers will use the franchise tag on edge rusher Brian Burns while trying to get a long-term deal done with him. This is not a shocking conclusion at all. Going back two weeks ago, when we had the conversation, we laid out the positives and the negatives, the pros, the cons to the Panthers, either tagging Brian Burns or not tagging Brian Burns. The conclusion that at least I came to, and I think any reasonable Carolina Panther fan came to, is, okay, if you're not going to extend him, at the very least, you got to franchise tag Brian Burns because that gives you time until the middle of July to come to a contract extension. Or it gives you an opportunity as the new league year approaches at 4 p.m. on March 13th to trade Brian Burns to another team. The Panthers had more options with the franchise tag if they were not going to extend Brian Burns. Now we sit here and it appears that the franchise tag is going to happen. Dan Morgan, the general manager for the Carolina Panthers, told us last week in Indianapolis at the NFL Scouting Combine that all options were on the table for Burns. I would assume that would mean the tag, the tag and trade, actually signing him to an extension, and quite possibly letting him walk for nothing in free agency. That wasn't really an option. The only options the Panthers had were to either sign Brian Burns, tag Brian Burns, and then later trade Brian Burns. Those are the options the Carolina Panthers have had laid out, and it appears right now the option that they're going to take is franchise tagging him with the hope that they can still come to terms of a contract negotiation and extension at some point in time down the road, according to Dan Graziano. Again, not surprising at all that this is where we're at based on it didn't appear that there was much momentum even once the window to start figuring out whether you're going to franchise tag a player or not. It didn't seem like there's a lot of momentum towards a new deal coming for Brian Burns. We haven't heard reports that, oh, the Panthers are close to having contract talks to have Brian Burns come back on an extension. It just felt like at the very beginning, he's likely going to be a tagged player and then they'll figure it out down the road. And the important thing for the Carolina Panthers is now they know what they're going to have salary cap wise as the cap came out last week, we talked about what that meant for the Carolina Panthers and Jonathan Jones, CBS sports used to cover the Panthers for the observer. Talked about how teams would be more willing 
to franchise tag a player like a Brian Burns. It would give him more opportunities with the space to go out there and to sign some players. And the Panthers are still going to have to make some moves, open up some cap space now that they're going to have this pretty big cap number from Brian Burns on the books until they either trade him or they're able to extend him. And that could take months before that even happens. I'm not at all surprised that we've gotten here. In a way, to me, it is, a, it is a little amusing that this is even a conversation that we're still having. We had this conversation in earnest back in, I want to say, like last year. I talked about extending Brian Burns. Get that deal done. Let's not wait around. Got down to training camp. Hadn't gotten the deal done. Got to week one. Brian Burns was staging a hold in to avoid getting fined. He played in that game. Came out looking awesome against the Falcons. And quite honestly, it was probably the best game he played all season long, which is part of the reason why a lot of Panther fans have said that they don't want Burns to get a $25 plus million dollar per year extension. Not sure why they're concerned about money that's not being spent out of their own pockets for a player who could help their bad football team not be a bad football team moving forward. It's only like they've seen guys like DJ Moore and Christian McCaffrey leave. The Panthers keep hitting on first round picks but for whatever reason, don't want to keep them around. So it's just beyond me how you as a Panther fan who does not want Brian Burns to be back here would not want that to be the case. Your team sucks. Why would you not want to have a good player here in Carolina? I don't understand that sentiment. And trying to say that he's being selfish and all that is ridiculous in my mind. The Panthers just don't have a ton of leverage when it comes to these discussions with Brian Burns. And I've been saying this since August that they didn't have any leverage. You looked at the roster that point in time when they were having the conversation they're bringing in Justin Houston, who is 34 years old, coming off a solid season in Baltimore, but it wasn't like he was going to be around long term. You had Marquise Haynes in the final year of his deal, not like he was going to be around a long round long term, uh, around long term. You, you also didn't know what the situation with DJ Johnson was going to be. The Panthers had turned down reportedly two first round picks and either a second or a third from the Rams back at the trade deadline in 2022. The Panthers could have traded Burns on March 10th when they moved up to get to number one in order to take Bryce Young in the NFL draft. They didn't trade him then. I'm sure just now past the combine, past the, um, the deadline in October, the Panthers could have traded Brian Burns. They didn't do it. They have had multiple times to trade this guy to get the most value from him, and they have not done it. So the fact that they have not done that and they have not gone out and signed him just is befuddling to me. Just give the man his money. I'm not necessarily upset about it right now because, okay, fine. You're going to tag him. You got plenty of time to figure it out. It's going to make things a little bit more complicated heading into the new league year as Panthers not going to have that much cap space. Looking at it, uh, the tag for Brian Burns, if they tag him as a linebacker, is $24 million. If they tag him as a defensive end, it's twenty-one point three. We'll see. That could be a whole nother conversation if the Panthers indeed tag him as a defensive end, even though on the team website it says outside linebacker, and that's due to the scheme change to a 3-4 base that they see him as a linebacker instead of a defensive end, which is what he would have been listed as prior to a Jero Vero coming here. Semantics, but still, you say on your website that he's a linebacker, $24 million. Carolina Panthers scored over the cap.com, only have $35 million in cap space. That would take away 24 of it, so they have $11 million remaining. There are some moves. Like cutting Terrace Marshall, like cutting Ian Thompson, Thomas, uh, like potentially cutting the uh, Dante Jackson if they want to, if they want to also find find a way to restructure or extend Teller Moten, that can up some open up some cap space. Uh, Derek Brown opening up some cap space. If they want to extend him. There are ways to get more money. That's still a ton to take away from the remaining cap space if they indeed are going to franchise tag Brian Burns, as a report from Dan Graziano suggests. The team will have until mid-July, plenty of time to figure out what the deal will be. Now, it's still going to kind of slow down maybe what they want to do as far as free agency goes, not having that $24 million of cap space. They were going to lose some anyways with an extension. Now they're going to lose a significant chunk of what was remaining. I'm sure that Brant Tillis has a plan. I'm sure that Dan Morgan has a plan and that they had a plan going into this, that if they're not able to come to terms with Burns, that they were going to put that aside, go figure out what to do with the salary cap, find a way to make this team better and get them to be far more competitive than they were last season when they went to in 15, then circle back late in the summer, figure out, okay, Brian, how can we get a deal done? We saw it work out with Taylor Moten a couple years ago. They tagged them. 
They kept him around, got a deal done right by the deadline. I'm hoping that will be the case for Brian Burns. So this is probably something we're going to have to table for a little bit of time as the Panthers try to figure out what they want to do with their roster here over the next couple of months. Then getting to the summer, that will be when they probably put a large focus once again on extending Brian Burns. I told y'all back in August and really even September when we had the conversation that and that's before Panther fans were against signing Brian Burns. That's not every Panther fan, but there were a lot of Panther fans now and there were Panther fans then who didn't want to sign Brian Burns like 30 mil, which I can understand. I felt like, you know, 27, 28 would make a little bit more sense. But the $30 million, that seemed to be a little more than he's, I don't know whether, whether he's worth it. I, I don't know if that made sense as far as the number, but it's not my money. It's the Panthers money. They can figure out what they want to do there. But at that point in time, I kind of felt like, and I still feel like 25, 27 a year, that seems to be fair. I, I don't know what exactly Brian Burns is asking for. I don't know what the Panthers are. Well, according to reports back then, the Panthers wanted to give him something similar to Max Crosby, who's getting about $22 million per year. And just the way how these contracts go, depending on when you get paid, what you did, you typically get more than the guy before. And looking at what Burns has done up to up until this point in his career compared to what Max Crosby and even Bradley Chubb had done, he's deserving of the money. And he's also has the benefit of youth sitting here and he has the leadership and he also has the Panthers in a situation where if he's not here, they're in trouble. So I told y'all way back then the time to really start to panic for anyone who actually wants Burn to be a Carolina Panther is if they get to mid July and they don't get a deal done and they're heading into that year with him playing on the franchise tag and then likely to become a free agent in 2025 because the franchise tag it's a lot of money to do it the second time around. Do not think the Panthers can afford it and really should do it if they're not able to come to terms with Brian Burns. So they're going to have until July. Once the franchise tag is placed officially, we're still waiting to see whether a deal gets done. But according to Dan Graziano, it is a near certainty that Brian Burns will be having this franchise tag slapped on him and the Panthers will circle back later on down the road to get a long-term deal done with him. And maybe they'll even try to get it done ahead of the new league year on March 13th at 4 p.m. So we'll see how that works out, but it appears that Brian Burns is headed towards the franchise tag. Not necessarily a surprise. Now, Graziano says that is a near certainty that it's going to happen. Another NFL reporter has something else to say as far as negotiations and whether the Panthers are willing to do the negotiations moving forward to Brian Burns. We'll talk about that here in just a moment on Locked on Panthers. The wait is almost over. North Carolina FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, is coming to our state on March 11th. We'll finally be able to bet on all our favorite teams and all our favorite sports. With FanDuel, there's tons of ways for you to get in on the action. You can bet on everything from the money line to over-unders, to which team will win this year's Tobacco Road Rivalry, all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, with live betting, you can even pick which player will put up the next bucket and the one. One after that, see for yourself why FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on so you can be the first to know when FanDuel goes live in North Carolina. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel. According to ESPN's Dan Graziano, it is a near certainty the Panthers will be using the franchise tag on Brian Burns while trying to get a long-term deal done with him. But according to another NFL insider, that may not be the case. CBS Sports' Josina Anderson tweeted this out on Sunday afternoon saying, I'm told the Panthers informed Brian Burns during the combine this past week that they aren't continuing contract talks. At this time, per source, tagging Brian Burns obviously remains on the table as does a tag and trade if it can be executed. But long-term contract talks are not currently in scope between the Panthers outside linebacker and the team per source. So Graziano says they're going to tag him with the intention to still negotiate with Brian Burns, while Justina Anderson says, while the tag, obviously that's on the table, but let's not rule out a tag and trade and also understand that the team told Brian Burns, right now we're going to move on. We're going to focus on some other things. Now, First off, the Panthers telling Brian Burns that they're going to stop contract talks, according to Josie Anderson. I don't think that's really a crazy thing. If they're going to tag him, which that's what Graziano is saying. And basically, if you just go back to Graziano's report, like it's a near certainty the Panthers are going to tag him. That would be aligned with Josie Anderson reporting that the Panthers told Brian Burns, hey, right now, 
we're just not where we need to be. Like we're too far apart. Let's just table it and let's get back to it down the road. The Panthers are going to have until mid July to figure out what to do with Brian Burns as far as trying to extend him. Last year, the deadline to extend players that were on the franchise tag was July 17th. I don't know what that date is right now. The NFL has not put that out on their website. As soon as I get that information, of course, I'll tell you right here on the show. The Panthers have April, really all of March, April, June, July. They got four months, three, four, three and a half months or so to figure out whether they can get a deal done with Brian Burns long term. But in the interim, they're going to try and figure out what to do with the salary cap as the $24 million tag for a linebacker, 21.3 for an out for a defensive end is going to take up a significant amount of the space that they have left over. And they're going to have to figure out how to open up that cap space in order to do what they want to do during free agency. So that's something that they need to focus on more so than what they're going to do with Brian Burns and his long term deal. I would still like to see the Panthers find a way to extend him prior to the beginning of the new league year. But seems to me that the real the time to do it was these last two weeks by four o'clock on Tuesday. That was the time to get an extension done. And once you get to the point where it's clear extension is not going to get done right now, you got to focus on everything else that you need to get done with the team and get prepared for free agency and then just go back and circle back with the player later on. Now, the interesting part of what you brought up was attack and trade. I have had numerous Panther fans out there discuss attack and trade, ask me about that, and even encourage Panthers to do that when it comes to Brian Burns. Again, for me, I just don't see why you would want to see your favorite team, which is the worst team in the NFL, get rid of yet another successful first-round pick. They've done it with McCaffrey. They've done it with DJ Moore. Why would you want to see them do it again with Brian Burns? This team is not getting better by trading away Brian Burns. And as far as the compensation goes, we can go back again to the trade deadline. 2022, is it going to be a fire sale in Carolina? The Panthers had an opportunity to trade Brian Burns for two firsts and either a second or a third to the Rams. They did not do that. That is not going to be on the table right now. There are plenty of teams in the NFL who are also trying to figure out what they're going to do with their salary cap. They're also trying to figure out what their plans are going to be once the new league year starts. Really, the negotiating period starts next week on March 11th to figure out, okay, who are we going to sign? And hearing that Brian Burns may be available via tag and trade, that will be interesting to a lot of teams out there. I don't think, though, the teams are going to be willing to give up the kind of capital that the Rams were about a year and a half ago, October 2022. The Panthers had their chance to get that much for Brian Burns, and boy, could they use that first-round pick. Last year, they could have used it when they traded up to get Bryce Young, and they could use it right now as they don't have a first-round pick in this draft. That would have been that would have been lovely, but that clearly, of course, as we know, was not the case for the Panthers as they did not accept that trade. I've been asked also about the non-exclusive franchise tag, which Lamar Jackson was placed on last year. There was a league-wide collusion by the owners who did not want to give out these fully guaranteed contracts to quarterbacks. They hated what happened with the Haslam's and giving Lamar, not, not Lamar, but giving Deshaun Watson all that money. They did not want that to be a trend. So even though Lamar had been in a league MVP and I understand the, the injury situation they had been through the last two seasons, they weren't willing, the rest of the NFL, to give up two first-round picks for a league MVP who's now a two-time league MVP. And the joke is on all those teams out there, and I guess including the Carolina Panthers, who are always focused. And I was someone who didn't really even advocate for Lamar Jackson coming here last year. I guess I was foolish, but still, I was somebody who felt like this team just needs to go young with a quarterback. There's so many other things on this roster that just aren't right where giving up two first-round picks – which, hell, I mean, they did anyways, and they swapped and they gave up one, but they gave up a lot to get Bryce Young. Uh, yes, hindsight 2020, you would rather have given up two first-round picks back-to-back -back years to get Lamar than what you gave up to get Bryce, but we'll see how things work out down the road. Either way, the point being, only quarterbacks have ever been placed on a non-exclusive franchise tag. I don't think a team is going to be willing to give up two first-round picks for Brian Burns even if he is an outstanding player. And the way I look at it with quarterbacks nowadays, they're playing until their late 30s, their 40s. Burns is not going to be playing that long. That is a long-term investment. When you find a quarterback, you're, you're set, man. You're set. When you find an edge rusher, that's not the case at all. The Carolina Panthers have a fantastic edge rusher, but we don't know if they have a quarterback. They've had Burns for a period of time, and that has not helped them win football games. 
what they need to get is a quarterback. Now, if Brian Burns trading him away would have helped you get a quarterback like it would have at the deadline last year and on March 10th last year when they traded up to number one with Chicago, then by all means, that would make sense. But now, when you hope you have your quarterback, you're not moving on from your quarterback, why don't you keep this guy around to keep the defense at the place it was last year and even improve upon that defense? So they're just not going to get the capital that they could have gotten last year. So everyone needs to kind of understand that's going to be the case. For the Panthers, they need to really hope that they can get multiple day two picks at the very least. A first round pick would be great, of course. But realistically, I don't know. Well, I guess that that probably is realistic. But if you're not going to get a first round pick, you got to get multiple, multiple day two picks in this year's draft. They only have one pick right now. But they have two picks in day two. They have their second round pick, 33rd, and then they have their third round pick, which I believe what, is 65. They need to get a couple more picks in the top 75 of the draft, top 100 of the draft, because right now only having two, not having a first round pick is not helping them. And again, I'll say not having a first round pick. I'm not sitting here upset about it because they don't get to use first round pick. It's that they don't get to trade back and get more picks to be able to have that capital. That would be nice. Trading Burns potentially well should yield them maybe a first round pick, probably first round pick. And if not that multiple day two picks in this year's draft, it's just not going to get them the multiple first round picks they could have gotten from LA and that they could get if he was a quarterback or if a team was willing to do the whole non-exclusive tag and sign Burns to an offer sheet. And Carolina says, now we're good. We're going to move on. I I just don't think that's realistically going to be on the table. They said everything is on the table. I don't think that actually is going to be on the table for a team actually willing to give that up. They weren't willing to give it up for Lamar Jackson and different circumstances. I understand that. I don't see why they would be willing to do it now with Brian Burns. And here's the thing too about that. If anything, a team could just wait another year. They could wait for the Panthers to negotiate with Burns, see if the two sides in three and a half months can finally get on the same page and come to a new deal. If they can't, the Panthers then can't negotiate with Burns at all throughout the season. He'll become a free agent next year because the franchise tag back-to-back years, a player is guaranteed at least 120% of it from the previous year's salary when tagged the second time it's going to be an astronomical number that the Panthers just cannot afford to place on Burns, even with the amount of cap space that they are projected to have next season. They can't afford to do it. So a team, instead of giving up two first-round picks this year with the exclusive franchise tag or even giving up one first-round pick if they want to do a tag and trade or if they want to give up multiple day two picks for a tag and trade, they could just wait next year where then Burns will come to them for free as far as draft competition and it can just sign him to whatever kind of deal he's looking for that's what i would do if i was a team i would just wait i wouldn't even give the panthers anything because the panthers if they don't end up signing burns are gonna be in a situation where this time next year brian burns is gonna be going elsewhere as i just don't see them being able to franchise tag him again based off of how much it would cost them so tag and trade it's it's uh it's out there it's still a possibility I just don't think it's going to end up being the amount of money that a Panther fan would like to see if the Panthers do, in fact, find a trade partner and move Brian Burns elsewhere. I want to see Burns stay here, but we'll see how all that plays out. So that was some intel from Josina Anderson and from Dan Graziano pertaining to Brian Burns and his situation in Carolina. There's also some more intel pertaining to some players the Panthers may be interested in once new league year starts in a week or so so we'll talk about that here in just a moment on locked on panthers this next segment is brought to us by our sponsor better help what's the first thing you do if you had an extra hour in your day personally i maybe would sleep in uh, a little bit or maybe even go play some golf a lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time the question is time for what if time was unlimited how would you use it the best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it if you're thinking of starting therapy get better help a try it's entirely online designed to be convenient flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just filled a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on. 
So it appears the Carolina Panthers are going to end negotiation with Brian Burns for the time being and slap the franchise tag on him, giving the team now a new direction as they look to free up some cap space and also figure out which players they want to sign once the negotiating period begins next week on March 11th at noon Eastern time. And if you paid attention to all the NFL news this past week going on at the Combine, we saw plenty of teams go out there and start franchise tag players. They started to open up some cap space. The Panthers were not one of those teams that did that. I expect now that that will begin this week, especially once they make it official that Brian Burns will be franchise tagged by 4 p.m. on Tuesday afternoon. And clearly, that's what the Carolina Panthers were trying to do last week. They were trying to focus on figuring out what to do with Burns and maybe even talking to some teams in Indianapolis about, okay, if we're going to tag them and we can't figure out a deal with them, we don't think a deal's ever going to get done, are you interested in maybe trading for Brian Burns? Dan Graziano from ESPN.com believes the Panthers are going to tag him with the intention to sign him down the road. Justine Anderson thinks that the tag is, of course, on the line, but also the Panthers may be interested in going out there and potentially uh, tagging and trading Brian Burns. We'll see how that all works out. But there's some other intel from both Jeremy Fowler and Dan Graziano from ESPN.com that is important for the Carolina Panthers as a few targets are out there that are involved in some of the reporting that they came out with um, on Sunday afternoon. So here, I want to get this out to you right now. Looking at Calvin Ridley in Jacksonville, the Carolina Panthers are in desperate need for a wide receiver. One Ridley, he would fit that bill. According to Jeremy Fowler of ESPN.com, the Jaguars are very much wanting to resign receiver Calvin Ridley, who had good experience in Jacksonville, but they know that it will be tough if he reaches the negotiating period starting on March 11th. The expectation is he will put up a rather gaudy number on a per year average. Teams see elite ability there. Are the Carolina Panthers one of those teams? I think they should be one of those teams that will be in on that negotiation potentially in on that deal as they very well should be the Jags would also of course want to keep Calvin Ridley around as he was good for Trevor Lawrence last year they collapsed in the final five weeks of the season due to Lawrence's injuries and some other issues that the team had they want him back but they're not going to tag him as Josh Allen who like Brian Burns and this was also reported by Dan Graziano on Sunday that looks like Josh Allen who had a record year for him and for the Jags this past season with the sack numbers, he's likely going to be franchise tagged. So they're going to tag him. That means Ridley is going to be a free agent. He's going to get to the negotiating table with some other teams. The Panthers should be a team that should be right down there. So that's good to know after watching T. Higgins get tagged. And still the reporting out there is that the belief around the league is the Bengals tagged him before the combine because they were going to start talking to some teams who may be interested, like Carolina Panthers, in a tag and trade situation. Panthers don't have a ton of capital to really do that, but they're also they're clearly a team that should be interested in D. Higgins and finding out what the price would be for Cincinnati. But as far as Calvin Ridley goes, the price will be large from a per year average. It just will not cost him any draft compensation this year or down the road. Mike Evans is another wide receiver the Carolina Panthers will be interested in. Dave Canales coming over from Tampa Bay. Mike Evans talked about that was a great higher for the Carolina Panthers, then deleting that tweet, but also a video of him just praising Dave Canales and the work that he did this past season in Tampa Bay. It could happen, y'all. It could happen. Dan Graziano saying, uh, and then there's Tampa Bay's Mike Evans, who will be 31 years old when the season starts. The Bucks would like to have him back and haven't given up hope, but the belief is that Evans will at least test the market during the negotiating period to see what else is out there. Jeremy Fowler also reporting that they are aggressively, that being the Bucks, aggressively pursuing a deal with Evans and want him to retire as a Buck. And the belief is Evans is open to that. But the Buccaneers also had the chance to sign him last August and didn't get something done. Anything is possible here. And if the Bucks can secure Antoine Winfield Jr., who seems to be the likely tag candidate and is somebody who could, of course, be re-signed. If he gets re-signed, and maybe they even figure out Baker Mayfield's deal before the deadline, which is fastly approaching. They could tag Mike Evans. So again, anything is possible here. And if the Bucs can secure Winfield and possibly Mayfield over the next few days, what's to preclude them from franchise tagging Evans at that point? They would have to do some quick work as right now, recording this on Sunday evening, that has not happened. Winfield Jr. appears to be bound for the tag. Mayfield uh, appears to be bound for maybe negotiating for some other teams. I don't know what's going to happen there. Mike Evans does not appear to be franchise tag. So Calvin Ridley, Mike Evans, those two guys, top of my list, uh, some of the top guys on my, on my list of free agent wide receivers for Carolina Panthers to bring in to fill that number one role. They 
look like they're going to make it to the negotiating period next Monday. That is great news for the Carolina Panthers, especially when it comes to Mike Evans. One final thing, and I was, I don't know, I shouldn't have been surprised by this, but I was um, very interested to see the Panthers named here was the market for guards. The Carolina Panthers, Dan Morgan really came out last week and said that Nikki Aquanu is going to stay out there at left tackle. He's young. He's so hungry. They feel like he can excel there, and we'll see where that happens. He played well his rookie year this past season. It did not work out, whether it was the seven different left guards. It was just natural regression, a sophomore slump. Uh, the scheme, I, I don't know. Icky Aquanu did not play well this past season. The Panthers are sticking with him there, and I like to see that. I, I'm rooting for him, want to work out, and hope it works out down the road. And at right tackle, of course, Taylor Moten, there's some things for you out there with his cap hit, $29 million. I don't think he can cut him. I think the best thing to do is extend him or they got to restructure that deal again. I prefer to see an extension because he's a good player for you and he's continued to be a good player and he's having an Iron Man streak, keep him around, uh, to, especially to help out Bryce Young as the rest of the offense line did not really do that for him a year ago. But guard, that appears to be a position the Carolina Panthers are interested in. People have talked about move Icky to guard. I say, what do you do at left tackle? At tackle if you get rid of him. Apparently, it's a very deep tackle draft. So the Panthers may have options. They're at tackle. They decide that they actually want to pivot and move Icky inside the guard. But according to Jeremy Fowler, uh, the Panthers are among the teams that will be interested in uh, trying to get a guard this offseason. As Fowler said, good money will be spent on guards this offseason. So many teams need them and have targeted the position. And Detroit's Jonah Jackson, Miami's Robert Hunt, New England's Mike on Winu and the Los Angeles Rams, Kevin Dotson are among the top options. Don't be surprised if some of them get paid. It's very possible to consider all the teams that really need garb help, including the Jets, Panthers, uh, Giants, and Jaguars. So the Carolina Panthers listed. Damian Lewis is another guy from Seattle who I've mentioned before would make a lot of sense, who could potentially could come here for a lesser than what those guys uh, would come at as far as their price because like the $16 million or more per year, that is an astronomical price. I Cannot remember the Panthers ever paying a guard that much. They paid Trey Turner a lot. I don't think it was uh, up to that amount of money. Now, if the Panthers are going to do that, I'm wondering what they do with Austin Corbett. If they were to release him, uh, but they post June one designation, that would save him $6.25 million against the salary cap. Money that would not open up until post June one. Then they could bring in one of those players as a starter, and Brady Christensen could stick around, of course, be the other starting guard. Or they could keep Corbett and have the new guy come in and have Brady Christensen as depth, which would also make sense as the Panthers did not get a lot out of Chandler Zavala last year. And Cade Mays also was uh, up and down during his opportunities. So interesting to see. After having seven different left guards, eight different right guards, Carolina Panthers, apparently, according to Jeremy Fowler, will be in the guard market. And that has been a position that they have spent some considerable capital trying to find a player. They got Corbett. On a deal, they went out there and drafted Christensen. He's playing guard. They went out and drafted Mays and Zavala the last couple seasons, and they have had some misses. I don't think Corbett's been a miss. Just the injuries have been unfortunate. They will be in the market for a guard, according to Jeremy Fowler. So we'll see how that materializes. I don't think they'll be paying top dollar, though. I think they're going to probably go bargain hunting like this franchise typically does during the free agency period of time. But that's going to wrap up this edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, as always, again, Julian Council, talking Carolina Panthers with you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Again, y'all, subscribe or follow the show for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter, at Julian Council, where I'll be answering your weekly Friday mailbag questions again on the show this upcoming Friday. But in the meantime, be safe, be happy, be whole. As always, keep pounding, and I'll talk to y'all on Tuesday.